everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be making a tutorial for something that's been highly requested for a very long time, and that would be a logo for your Discord server. Now this one, as you can see, is rather basic, but I've seen this style used a few times before, that style being a colored corners, a colored ring, followed by text in the center, and then some kind of image in the backgrounds, and typically the image you pick for the background would be one that wouldn't make it hard to read what the text actually says. Now, if you're expecting tutorials on how to make logos like this one or that one, unfortunately, that requires actual art. I'm not an actual artist. I can't draw stuff with a pen or any of that, even digital art. Everything I do is restricted to manipulation like this or any other tutorials you see on the channel. So anything like that, that's outside of my experience, so please don't be asking for anything like those because I just can't do that. But I'll see how this one goes that I have up well, on here right now, and if you guys like it, I'll see if I can try to make some more. So I'm going to jump right into this, going to go File, New, and the width and the height are going to be 1000 by 1000, and click Create. Then of course, as usual, we're going to create a new layer, delete the backgrounds, and to start off, to make it really easy on ourselves, we're just going to drop down pink, where is it? I'm starting three, two, one, go. Now we're going to come over to our left side, go over to our ellipse tool, and just drop it down, doesn't matter what size, because we're going to adjust that in a moment. So of course, first you want to make sure both sides are equal, 837 by 837. Doesn't really matter, we're going to adjust it in a second. Just make sure it's a perfect circle, not an ellipse, an oval, or any of that. Ellipse. Ellipse is a circle, not an oval. Whew. Alright, and then we want the size to be 56 pixels. Don't worry about the stroke color, we're going to make change that in a second. Now if you don't see properties, for Photopia, it would be the button that says PRO on the right side for Photoshop. You go over to Window, go to Properties, click it. It'll pop up on the side and you can either drag it to the side and dock it there or leave it where it already was at. So with our image placed down, I'm going to right click and rasterize layer, then Control T. Actually, I probably should have rasterized it after that, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure the circle properly fills up this entire shape. So the edges aren't quite connecting, so let's make a few adjustments. And then make sure this side is also adjusted, just so it goes all the way to the ends. Perfect. Now right click, blending options, gradients, overlay, and I'm just using these two colors, the default ones I have popped up on here. And that would be this hex color. Pause if you need to grab that code. And that hex color. And again, if you need to, just pause to grab that code. Then I'm going to right click and rasterize their style. Then right click, go to blending options. Then go over to drop shadow. And here I'm going to apply with the following settings 77, 0, 4, and 24. Click OK there. Then let's grab our noise texture, drag it in, make sure it is going to be right on top of it, and then we can either do right click, create clipping mask, or alt, click in between, and on it goes. I'm actually going to hide that right there so we do not see that mess. And the noise, we want this as a linear burn with about 55% opacity. You can make the opacity higher than 55, it's just going to make it darker, it's kind of up to you how you want to go about doing that. I'll call this a noise, and I'll call this the ring, and when you both of these selected, I held shift and I clicked, then control G and double click on the group one name, and let's call this the mm, border ring. I am not very good on coming up with creative names. Right clicking on the eyeball gives you options to change the color and we're just going to go with say violet matches it pretty well. Now I'm going to create a new layer, drag it below, control G and I'll call this the base. 
an eyeball, let's make this orange. And for the first part of the base, I'm actually gonna be using this pink color right here to go around the edges. I can either do this with the pen tool, or I believe you can do select and then select inverse. Actually, no, that wouldn't work. So select inverse, we'll also select this empty space. Or you can just make the entire background the pinkish color, but then we have to deal with the actual image kind of being messy there. So we're gonna do it this way. Where is it at? The pen tool, no, the brush tool. And just regular old brush, hard rounds. That's a default brush, so you would have that. And just go all the way around. Do, do, do. And then around over here. Just making sure I don't go outside the ring. This is obviously not gonna be perfect. I'll show you in a second. So if I want to hide the border ring, it's kind of a wobbly mess. But we're gonna call this the edge color. And in the future, when you edit this template or make it yourself, you can just right click, blending options, color overlay, and change it to whatever you want. I recommend not using colors like white or black because of, I guess black could work and white could also work, but with light mode or dark mode, they aren't gonna show up. So basically any other color would work fine. Just so you can think about the different themes that Discord already has in place and how your designs are gonna be affected by those. Now with the edge color down, we can go ahead and drag in our base color. If you can't drag it in, go to your rectangular marquee tool, highlight the entire thing, edit, and then copy, and then bring it over, and control V, and it is in. But for now, we have this one. I did control T, and now I'm gonna drag it down and just like that. I recommend doing a, or is it, filter, blur gallery, field blur. If you're using Photoshop, I'm not sure if Photopia has that setting. I, I think I checked it in the video I did on it. But I don't quite recall. It's all right. So blur gallery, blur, Field Blur is optional, but it's a nice little addition if you can do it. And we'll just call this the background color. Now I went really basic with this. I just chose a low poly black image because it would offset nicely against basically anything, but you can choose any other image. In my example over here, when I was first making it, I did this one. Oh shoot, it's not there. Well, I did a scenic view and had the sky and a pink tree, but it's just too light so my text would not show up well. So just a recommendation, you can always mess around with it and try whatever you want. And then finally, for our last part, we're gonna create a new layer. Hmm. Trying to decide if I want it underneath the border ring or above the border ring. We can decide in a second, so Control G to group that layer, and we'll call this the text. Right click on the eyeball, let's make this blue. And we are gonna drop down text in the same color as our border. And because my server is called Suke, I'm just gonna do TK. But whatever you wanna do, I mean, obviously don't do TK unless your server has initial similar TK. Wouldn't make sense for you, but TK is a nice little initial for Suke. 643, I believe, for the text. Make sure the text is centered. Perfect. Not quite perfect. Mm. There, that's perfect. Now let's go ahead and delete that extra layer. We're gonna take our pattern lines. And of course, all of these are gonna be available for download in the file in the description, including a link to this font. Then clip it on using one of the two methods, alt between or right click clipping mask. And I'm gonna clip that on, control T to resize it, make sure it fits. Normally upscaling is a big no-no when you're editing stuff because it lowers the quality. I guess you can't really tell because it was such a low, I didn't upscale it much, but for larger images, if you're upscaling it from 100 by 100 to say 1000 by 1000, yikers, you do not wanna do that. All right, so soft lights, let's see, where is it? 
you think with how often I use it, I'll be able to tell where it is at a glance, but nope. Control T, Control J, and main text. And this one is going to be blending options. I could just click color and just white and then drop that. So we'll call this the white drop. And then while you're in the move tool, use the arrow keys on your keyboard, left, right, left, right. And just repeat that process. Oh boy, look at that little thing in the corner. I'm pointing to it as if you can see where I'm pointing. <laughs> it's going crazy over there. And then this has, provides a nice little offset to the text. I was going to show you how it looked on mobile and how it looked on PC, but I use my phone for recording, so I can't exactly pull that off. But I promise it looks pretty good, and of course with adjustments to fit your specific server, it would look really great. Now, thanks for watching, let me know if you want to see more tutorials like this, I know this is highly requested. Not sure why I chose to wait so long to make this kind of a video, but it's here now. Other than that, have a great day.